Uh, before we get started, let's introduce ourselves, starting to my left. Sherwin Douglas, Commissioner. Ann Vara. Oops, sorry, sorry. sorry. Ann Vara. Tim Twain, Director of Community Development. Ann Beaky. Eric Kluster. Doug, Doug Hedges, City Planner. Ann Mark with the City Attorney's Office. Thank you. We have a quorum. Our next item is the approval of minutes for November 12th. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Ms. Douglas. Is support. there support? Support by Mr. Kluster. Any discussion on these minutes? Okay, not seeing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes have been approved. Next item is the public comment on non agenda items. Is there anybody here that would wish to speak to the Planning Commission on a non agenda item? Okay, not seeing any hands, we'll close item C and we're going to go to new business. This is a site plan 1912 23 to pave off street parking lot for the religious institution um, Mitcham Chapel AME Church at 4207 West 14 Mile Road. Mr. Twin. Uh, this site is uh, zoned multifamily uh, residential, uh, it is an existing uh, church uh, religious institution. Uh, as we indicated in report, uh, uh, those uses are considered a special land use in multifamily. Uh, given that it exists uh, and the proposed improvements are not uh, considered uh, an enhancement or uh, an enlargement of the intensity of the use, we've simply listed it as a site plan approval. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to take what is primarily a gravel uh, parking surface uh, and convert it into a, a hard surface parking lot uh, with some 19 regular spaces and I believe one handicapped space for a total of 20. Uh, that would bring it, uh, the site more into compliance uh, uh, under the zoning ordinance for having a hard surface and the appropriate number of parking spots. Uh, in terms of the conditions, conditions recommended on the uh, uh, site plan. Uh, they are listed there one through seven. Uh, primarily the first one is related to uh, landscaping and screening that would be proposed or provided around the uh, parking area. Petitioner is primarily proposing to leave <coughs> the existing uh, privacy fence. Uh, if the Planning Commission uh, uh, chose to uh, require additional landscaping or screening, um, uh, we would ask that you identify that as part of your review this evening. Uh, secondly, as part of the landscape plan, uh, staff's recommending they provide a uh, survey that indicates the number of existing trees that will be removed. Uh, under the uh, zoning ordinance, they would be required to replace those uh, on site, uh, basically two to one. Uh, so we're looking potentially for uh, a landscape and screening plan based on your review this evening. Um, number two is in regards to the number of parking spots and the seating capacity of the church. Uh, three, four, five, and six are standard contingencies regarding uh, uh, engineering uh, plans, uh, lighting, fixtures, signage, uh, performance bonds, etc. Mr. Twing, any questions for Mr. Twing? <clears throat> Ms. Beakey? Can, can you can, uh, comment at all on the condition of the current screening, the fence, et cetera, or maybe the petitioner can do that when they speak? Um, well, you've, they, they've provided some pictures of the screening um, in, the, in the packet, uh, looking at uh, you know, Google Earth, you can see those as well, mm -hmm. um, Google Maps. Um, okay, thanks. Any other questions for Mr. Twain? Okay, is the petitioner here? Welcome. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alan Cross with Monument Engineering. This is uh, Reverend Boyd and uh, Gary, er, yes. Gary Cummings. Gary Cummings. Welcome. Is there anything you'd like to add or uh, discuss with us? I think Mr. Twing uh, summed up everything up pretty well. Um, we are in the process of um, preparing a landscaping plan for a submittal um, to, you know, increase the screening along the uh, edges. Um, we do want to keep maintain what is there, but just enhance it. 
Um, we're trying to save as many of the existing trees um, as possible. Um, we, to the, I guess the standard items, we're not proposing any new signage, nor are we proposing any new uh, lighting on the property, and uh, nor are we proposing any work in the, in the public right away at this point. We're happy to answer any questions regarding the plans or the uh, function of the church. Thank you. Ms. Beakey. Um, as far as what you're going to put down on the surface, um, you may be aware that there's a, we have some new stormwater um, uh, fees that are going to be put in place based on permeable versus non-permeable surfaces. And I'm just wondering if maybe you're going to use a permeable surface it, on the parking lot or what it's going to be. Yeah, well, in, in terms of it might help you in cost in the long run. Understood. At, at this point, we're not proposing a, a permeable pavement. So it'd be standard? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, just standard asphalt. Well. Questions for the petitioners, Ms. Douglas. So, it, it, while we're waiting for a, an official tree survey, it, it kind of looks like there are two trees there. Is that pretty yes. much correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, so, um, and you anticipate having to remove those? No, we're going to oh. keep those trees. Okay. And we do have well. It's, it may be a little hard to see through some of the demolition notes, but there, we do have trees located, and we can clean that up for the uh, for staff review. And you, oh, that's your fence, right? Yes. The, the screening the, fences? The, yeah, south and the west property line, a privacy fence that exists. Okay. Hey, hey. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Kloster. Uh, can you, since we don't have full engineering drawings, can you speak to the intent with the stormwater management with the new um, impervious <coughs> surface? Uh, we're looking to sheet flow that to uh, 14 mile and not sheet flow onto our neighbors. Okay. What is the purpose of paving? Well, during the, during the winter time and during the rainy season, that's that's just gravel and mud, and so people are slipping uh, on that and coming in, and and their shoes are really messed up. And it's an improvement to the church that we think would enhance the worship experience and make the church more appealing to to people and 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 comfortable for our for our congregation. Thank you. Any other questions for the petitioner? There are a motion. Mayor? So moved. Motion moved to approve the, <clears throat> the plan. Okay. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with my. Uh... <laughs> We're coming in from the cold. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> motion by the mayor to um, move the plan <coughs> forward. Is there support? Support. Support by Ms. Beakey. Is there any discussions on this motion? <clears throat> So Ms. The, the assumption here is that we will leave it to staff to determine if their landscaping plan is acceptable. Basically, yes, because we're if they're going to keep our biggest concern was are the trees staying right. or being removed, and, and there's not enough detail there to tell for sure the impact on it. So if they're keeping the trees, and you're satisfied with what's there and the <clears throat> screening, that was our biggest question. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you. I just add, I think we got their word, the trees are going to be there. And uh, it makes sense. I mean, it's in your own motivation to have some nice mature trees on the property. Yeah. Um, and so I have no opinion about landscaping that much. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but uh, I think you guys will meet the regs. And it's glad to, I, I know I've been there and have parked in that lot before. And <laughs> it was a little surprising the first time. I was like, oh, wow, okay. So this will be an improvement. Any other discussion? Not seeing all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Yes. Usually cold weather drives it, not going from cold weather. Okay, uh, next item is another site plan. This is SP 181230. That's a revised site plan to construct a six story multifamily building with 69 dwelling units and height of 74 feet at 222 East 6th Street. And six zero nine six eleven South William Street, Mr. Uh, this project was in front of you previously, as we've indicated in the uh, staff report. Uh, initially, it, it proposed some seventy-eight dwelling units, 
and 108 parking spaces. Uh, that was revised at the uh, Planning Commission's uh, uh, direction. Uh, it was eventually uh, uh, reduced to 70 dwelling units and uh, 105 parking spaces. <coughs> the overall height of the building at that time was 63 feet, uh, 5 inches. Still had six levels. Um, the petitioner, as you indicated in the overview, is proposing to do a couple of things to modify that modify that previously approved plan uh, they are proposing to raise the height of the building to 74 feet uh, versus again what I indicated previously was 63 and a half uh, they are eliminating one dwelling unit going from 70 to 69 uh, it appears that that's primarily in order to expand a fitness <coughs> center area uh, for the residents uh, they are maintaining 105 uh, parking spaces in the proposal. They are. The other item they're proposing to revise is the uh, location of the swimming pool, which was previously up on the uh, uh, roof area. Uh, they're proposing to move that down to uh, the terrace area, if you recall, the layout of this site. Um, question we would have there is, is if the Planning Commission is comfortable with the screening that was uh, uh, is proposed based on your concern last time is this a, a butts up to another uh, residential uh, development to the east in that area basically they're showing a ramp uh, screening wall some landscaping in the pool hot tub area on the terrace um, Another item that we've pointed out in the report um, on levels four and five, there are some windows uh, <coughs> proposed on the elevation along the south elevation that are on the property line. Uh, we're pointing that out simply because it's unlikely those will get past building code review uh, to have openings on the property line. Uh, if the Planning Commission is uh, Considering approval, um, the contingencies we have listed are uh, your approval of the additional height to 74 feet, um, uh, either accepting the proposed screening on the terrace on, the, on that level or modifying it as part of your review. Um, in here basically some of the same provisions uh, uh, that were previously approved as part of the uh, uh, prior plans maintaining all those other contingencies um, and then standard contingencies again for the right-of-way work and signage thank you mr. Twain any questions Ms. Douglas the the windows on the south um, <coughs> facade so are those not overlooking the terrace but on the more westerly part of the south facade uh, they're on the as I said the fourth and fifth level uh, if I get up there in a sec they're below the terrace or below the roof uh, patio No, I mean, I, I read your, I looked at the plans and I read what you said and I wasn't sure what the, what they're doing, what the change was. <laughs> it's these windows, if you look at the screen, it's <coughs> these windows here. Have been added. Yeah, those, those were added along that south wall. Those are all, appear to be on the property line to provide additional units there. Built by building code, they generally don't allow openings on a property line. It would more look like this. They're above the uh, condominium project to the south. Okay. Oh, okay. All that's right. The, now I now I visualize it. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> Any other questions from Mr. Twain? Is the petitioner here? Uh, good evening. My name is Andy Millia. I'm 
president of Franklin Property Corporation, were the development consultants for the uh, uh, developer. Uh, developer is uh, Anthony Randazzo, his son Anthony Randazzo, Jr. Uh, they're both here this evening to answer any uh, additional questions. Um, I believe Tim did an excellent job kind of summarizing uh, the request. Uh, it, it's necessitated out of the fact that we want to raise the building height a few feet due to some safety and some design elevation can, uh, issues. Uh, when we uh, did uh, additional engineering on the property, you know, we were really in deep into the groundwater, which is at eight feet, and the, we we're set 10 feet below grade. The goal is to raise, at, above, raise the bottom of the parking um, above the permanent groundwater level. So that necessitated raising the building, also making some improvements to the uh, parking, <coughs> make that height a little bit higher for a ramp to go up as well as to add some additional height to the floors to make those uh, more marketable. So it's the same building in terms of um, <coughs> overall elevation uh, design, actually uh, one less unit, the same amount of parking. Uh, the building, as you'll notice in the package, uh, is still significantly lower than some of the other uh, surrounding buildings in the area. Uh, I think you did an excellent job of, of highlighting in the, in the potential approval conditions. Uh, we're agreeable to all the uh, conditions outlined, including removal of the windows on the south uh, property line if, if that's necessary. Uh, again, the, both Randazzos are here to answer any technical questions as it relates uh, that you might have. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? Ms. Beakey? I guess the only question I have is thinking about the pool, and again, because it's a residential area, and that, can you explain again the screening in a little bit of detail, and also if it has some sound absorbency features? Just to get, You say it's supposed to be serene, but we know that people sometimes are not serene, so sure. <laughs> kind of talk a little bit yeah, about yeah, so that. The, the pool <laughs> is now located on the, the second floor area, and it's designed to have uh, landscape screening to the uh, property owners uh, adjacent to it. Um, be potted, you know, trees and, and, and plants and screening. So it'll have a visual screening and that'll help with <coughs> sound screening um, as well. As far as I know, sound screening is not not addressed with the landscaping helps visually more so, but... Um, well, a lot of the, the trees buffer it. This is uh, uh, Anthony Randazzo. Thank you for asking that question. My name is Anthony Randazzo. That's In addition to the... Uh, is there a picture of that up there that can show oh, the... He's showing me now, yeah. Thank okay. You. We also have a fence okay. behind it. Okay. So not only will you have this sound absorption of, you know, the trees, which are minimal, but you'll also have a fence. And then we also have a, an area between that and the neighbors. So as you know, the only way to eliminate sound is either by space or density. We have both. And the fence is going to be made of what? Uh, more than likely, it'll be some sort of dense uh, wood or acrylic material. Thank you. Any other questions for the petitioner? Mr. Kloster. Um, the screening right now I'm seeing is only on the east side of the terrace, correct? There's none proposed for the south side of that terrace? There is a parking lot behind it. Yeah, there's a parking lot for the uh, co op behind there. And we more than likely, well, that'd be obviously the south side, right? So we'd right. like to get the sun in there. Uh, in addition to that thought, uh, so, you know, we'd have some pots along that, but it's going to be substantially above that parking lot. Another consideration was you want to have a pool over a parking structure as opposed to residence for safety's sake. So we consulted our pool consultant. He said they all like. <laughs> so we thought it would be best to have it over concrete. <coughs> Uh, we took his advice. That was one of the main concerns. Mm. But thanks for pointing that out. Any other questions for the petitioner? Not seeing. Is there a motion? Douglas. Well, I will say I am not wild about the additional height here. <clears throat> um, I think we already uh, granted them some slack in our first approval. Um, the the nearby Barton Towers, or I'm sorry, Royal sorry Royal Manor, 
notwithstanding um, the other taller buildings that we have been cited are in downtown, which is where you want tall buildings. Um, so I'm not inclined to grant them the height variance. I don't have, actually, I don't have a problem with the windows on the, the property line on the south facade. Um, the, the pool is fine, but I just think we're, we're I'm, I'm not crazy about the additional um, height of the building, and I, the solution might be to take a story off this. Um, so I'll, I'll try this and I'll see what my fellow commissioners feel on the subject, but um, I'm inclined to um, grant uh, the, uh, the petitioner's proposal with the exception of item one. And limit them to their original height, which was what, 68, Mr. Twain? Uh, 63 and a half feet, I believe it was. Okay. And if that 63 and a half feet means you have to take off more than one story of the building, then, you know, I'll consider a height that allows them to keep that, whatever, fifth story. Um, but I'm just not ready to go that high here. Is there support on that motion to remove item one? Support. Okay, this motion has been made to remove item one. Well, actually, to revise item one to make the maximum building height 63, whatever Mr. Twain said, 63 something, or whatever enables them to have one, two, three, four. Is it currently five stories of, of unit? Five stories, and then there's that recessed penthouse. Um, May, may we address the Planning Commission? Is it would it be appropriate? We do have a motion on, on the table, so we're in the middle of a motion. Okay. So there's been support by Mr. Kluser. Is there the discussion on that motion? Ms. Beakey. I guess uh, my looking at the rendering and seeing that it is a setback uh, top floor, I'm wondering why they had added it and, and also I'm assuming basically on this rendering you're not going to see it much and actually as it looks to me, it looks makes the building look more contemporary. Not that that's necessarily a criteria, and so I guess I'd like to hear why it was added and what the difference is. To yeah, yeah I'm on the same same page because um, while I agree in general with height, I think that you're balancing a couple of things here with the setback, especially there on the south side, which you're going to affect. I mean, we have a fire station on the one side, not an issue, um, but on the south side there. You have a significant, I mean, even from here, from the ground view, assuming that all the dimensions on this drawing are accurate, you really can't see um, that um, issue anyway. You can't see the height fully. And I agree with Ms. Beakey that, you know, it does add some architectural flair to it and kind of makes it, you know, stand out a little bit. Just like the building next to it has sort of the unique um, <clears throat> patio. Um, you see the different colors. It's Colors kind of for its time a little bit more contemporary. Um, it adds some some flavor, or not some flavor, but some character to it. So for me, um, in general, like if this was just a square box, I'd have an issue granting it. But I think given the fact that it's um, tiered back, especially on the south side, uh, where we would have concerns, um, I, I can't, I'm not sure that I really want to f support the motion. Um, I don't know what the proper parliamentary procedure is, but it would be interesting to hear from the petitioner. I was um, thinking the same thing about Robert's rules. I don't have my book in front of me. Doug, can you help? Or yeah, you, if they, you wish to. During the discussion? Yeah, you can. I break it all the time at the commission it's meeting. It's your privilege. <laughs> You're, You're the, the mayor. Privilege the chair, yeah. the chair's privilege. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's in Robert's rules, is it? No, there's nothing preventing okay. him from addressing Please. you again if you want. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And we understand that the issues are raised. What I think is important to understand is we're not adding density. We're not adding units to it. We're not adding height for height's sake. We're adding height for practical safety concerns and, and design features. So the first one is is bringing it further out of the grade to avoid groundwater issues, which is a, a safety and a design and an engineering issue. We're also adding some height to the garage because of the ramp issue. So that's making a better product because of it. And then there's a slight height increase on each floor to make a more modern contemporary apartment unit to be competitive with you know, what's, what's popular in Royal Oak. So we're not adding 
mass height to create more units. We, you know, we're not coming in and, and adding density. We're just improving the previously approved project. Um, and it, it does fit within the, the character of the uh, neighborhood. It does fit in with the character. It's much lower than some of the adjacent buildings. So I think Ms. Douglas raises a, a, an excellent point. You know, we're not in favor of just adding density, but we are in favor of improving the product from a visual standpoint, from a marketability standpoint, and from a safety standpoint. So uh, we, we'd ask that you consider that. The other consideration, uh, Commissioner, if you're concerned about the height, uh, we would be willing to concede to have some taller trees in the front, we'll get them as tall as we can, which is attractive and kind of will minimize the look uh, in terms of the height. But the uh, kind of in keeping with some of the logic was we didn't have at the time of our original approval, we didn't have the uh, appropriate water tables because they vary sometimes. And they're instituting a new stormwater uh, tax, which, you know, we're in favor of improving the storm. Not a tax. Excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. Uh -huh. Improvement. It's a, fee. it's a fee. So by keeping out of it, we're not, we're not pumping water in the system because obviously you'd have uh, a massive uh, sub pump, you know, constantly pushing it through by, by keeping it lower, which we could achieve what we want, but we would have to go lower. It would not be beneficial to the storm system at all and certainly not to uh it, it's it's just not structurally a sound way to do it but we would put taller trees in addition to that we didn't bring up the patio at the time we had one of the units that was kind of facing the other mm -hmm. property next door we eliminated it so we don't have that anymore and then we additionally we put those screening trees on the side to stop any potential noise who are sensitive to these neighbors. I've actually visited them in their home, okay? Because I don't, I don't want to harm anybody in that way. And um, we're, this is family owned, so we're gonna be responsible for this for the remainder of my life. And my son has joined us. Uh, he enjoys the business very much. So if there's any issues, we're here to answer anything that would ever come up. But the design is, is practical. In addition to that, we have a lot of units coming on in Royal Oak. So you can't have short ceilings uh, anymore in uh, units, you know, because these eventually are designed to be sold as potential <coughs> condominiums. So we're putting nine foot as opposed to eight. And we have the architect here if you have any questions. So we're kind of in keeping with what's uh, uh, contemporarily going on right now. And by removing a floor, it makes it very economically burdensome because the price goes up substantially for the remainder of the building, which I know is not, you know, a planning consideration, but it's a practical consideration for ourselves. So I'd, I'd kindly ask you to keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kluster. Uh, so the report mentioned a two-foot delta from the groundwater. Uh, situation that was discovered after the Planning Commission approval. Can you speak to the rest of the eight feet that you're asking for? We can. Um, there's a, that, that property kind of goes on an angle. You know, it's higher on one side. I believe it's uh, higher on the uh, Troy side than the Williamson's, William Street side. So it, it, it's, it, it kind of like a semi walkout. So we came out of the water table and we opened, the parking was too short. So we had to add a, like, what is it? A foot and a half per parking. Uh, can you address that, Peter? That we, this is my son. We were initially uh, proposing to go 10 feet uh, below grade and we encountered water at eight feet. So our geotech had asked us to put it two feet above the groundwater. It's, so that's a four foot swing. Okay. Then there's a bit more for the garage, that ramp, in order for it to work. Self parking is important, we understand that. So a few feet there and then a couple feet for the floors for the nine feet. That that's the ten. Is the was the was it a steepness of a ramp issue? Is that that was part of it. And we, we went from <clears throat> preliminary conceptual plans to ready to go. And we encountered that and we said we the ramp is important. We gotta be able to park it. And that uh, 
that was something we had to address. All right. The podium is made out of steel, as you know, and concrete. So you have steel members that are thicker. You don't want as many posts in there. And we had to thicken those a little bit. So it made, made the parking, we had to make it taller. And also, they were designed for eight-foot ceilings. That's not what you do today. Nine is kind of like what's in keeping in terms of the units for ceiling. Does that make sense? Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion? There is a motion there. Yeah, I just say, I mean, that's interesting. Uh, I'm glad we took a moment to, to hear you out. I mean, always from a, I guess we could say from a practical perspective, we always think of, you know, no offense, but return on investment as far as, you know, want more units, want more ever. In this case, it's you're not getting the units and, you know, you had a plan and, you know, you dug down and the water table's a little higher uh, than you expected and uh, that could kill a project very quickly. But you made some adaptations. <clears throat> I think probably the only maybe subjective element to this would be going from eight something to nine foot ceilings. Uh, understanding that's more in the end, but, but the rest of the hardships with the safety of the parking garage and the water table makes sense to me. So I think, I mean, from a, I, I guess what I recall from the last meeting, we had a lot of concerns mostly about um, traffic and light and, you know, uh, uh, disturbances to the neighbors directly across the street on the, on the east side. Um, and so uh, I think, you know, while I appreciate the motion on the surface, I, I'm not going to support it because I'd prefer to see, you know, I don't like the idea of a water pump going either and pumping <clears throat> into our storm system because even though it's not raining or if it is raining, you got water underneath the ground and we've been taking great measures to prevent <coughs> water from going into our system. And so this would, you know, by not doing it, I mean, we'd almost exasperate a problem versus solving a problem. <laughs> Uh, and so um, I think, but I would support a motion that, you know, I think this is a fair and reasonable hardship request, in my opinion. Any other discussion on the motion that's on the table? Ms. Douglas. You know, I probably should have asked these questions before I made my motion <laughs> because I find their explanation reasonable and, and uh, I'll probably vote against my own motion. <laughs> you know, I've had to do that several times, you, so it's good to have someone yeah. else withdrawn. You can withdraw your motion. Um, can I? Yes. No, I don't think so. Can I? You don't know why not? If we all agree. <laughs> I move to withdraw my motion. We don't have okay. to move. You just withdraw it. Oh. No, actually, I think once a motion is made and seconded, it belongs to the table, and the table has to act on it. I think I you can withdraw your motion. You probably could have voted no already by now. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. You've withdrawn your motion? Y yes, but the table has to accept it. I have no objections. All those in favor of withdrawing motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion's withdrawn. Okay, is there a new motion? I move to approve the proposal as submitted. That's your support. Second. Moved by Ms. Douglas to support, uh, seconded by Mayor. Is there any discussion on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Four to one. Approved. Thank you very Congratulations. Much. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. You Hopefully no more surprises when <laughs> you start digging. <laughs> be able to admit Maybe they'll get oil. Now. We, haven't, we haven't discovered a woolly mammoth yet in Royal Oak, so, you know. It's always the potential. Okay, the third item under new business is a public hearing. It's a zoning ordinance text amendment for wireless communication facilities. Mr. Twain, or is this Doug? Uh, well, I'm going to have Doug walk through it with you. He <coughs> spent most of the time <coughs> preparing it. Um, very, very briefly, as you'll see in the cover memo, uh, there are three different types of, or three different reasons why we uh, uh, prepared the revisions. Um, in terms of uh, uh, addressing some of the newer regulations and requirements of the FCC and, and state federal law, uh, we've identified those. We've also identified some tax amendments that um, an attempt to clarify uh, required standards and procedures and remove some unnecessary or repetitive language. 
And then we've also added, uh, and those are highlighted in yellow, uh, we've also uh, uh, added a provision that would allow the Planning Commission some discretion of its of the setback fall zone area uh, if the engineers can provide you with a document that shows the tower or support facility would basically right. collapse upon itself and that would become the new fall zone rather than the true or height of the uh, structure itself. So those are three different uh, um, reasons for some of these revisions and uh, I'll let Doug kind of give you an overview of, of the document and uh, then if you've got questions we'll address them and then you'll have a public hearing. Okay. Yeah, as Tim said, there's <clears throat> three different types of amendments we've proposed. Uh, the first I'd like to address are ones that came up in the recent discussion for the um, the new support structure that's been reviewed over the last previous meetings here. There was some discussion about uh, if a petitioner for a new support structure can demonstrate to the Planning Commission's satisfaction uh, that it would either collapse on itself or fall uh, within the site uh, that the Planning Commission be allowed to waive the maximum permitted setback from streets and residential zoning uh, instead of having petitioners uh, for them having to go first to the Planning Commission and then to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for a variance from those setbacks. Uh, to allow that process to happen, uh, as Tim said, those changes to the ordinance are highlighted in green, can be found on pages 7 and 10. Uh, if those are implemented, that would allow during a site plan review of the Planning Commission to waive or modify required setbacks for a new support structure. Uh, if they do so, then the petitioners would then not have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance following. It's similar to other standards in the ordinance where the Commission's given discretion on various standards to help alleviate the number of you know, variance application. The second type is some text amendments we've kind of had on the back burner and waiting for a while. Most of them are related to changes in FCC regulations in 2015 regarding what are known on our uh, small cells or distributive antenna systems. Uh, some different regulations were adopted then, but since they were adopted, the city has not updated our zoning ordinance uh, to be in compliance with those new regulations. Um, those changes you can be found highlighted on blue on pages 5 and 6. There's also some changes highlighted in blue on page 3. Uh, most of those are just uh, two definitions. One is on attached wireless communication systems. That one again is meant to be uh, consistent with the new FCC regulations. Uh, the second uh, definition of co-location, the current one we have is a, uh, not consistent with the definition that's under federal and state law, so we're recommending that it, we update it so that it is consistent uh, with state and federal law to avoid any uh, problems in the future. The last set of revisions are one that staff is recommending you know, based on the current wording of the ordinance. Uh, our ordinance is adopted is based on a model ordinance that was crafted uh, uh, several years ago uh, by kind of an ad hoc committee of different planners and city officials and also wireless uh, communication uh, representatives. Uh, my former employer, I happen to be a member of that committee, so I'm uh, pretty aware of what the things that went in on crafting that. But some uh, people took the model and adopted it for other communities. Others changed other things after it was supported. Some of them wound up with an excessive amount of legalese and overly technical zoning information. So what we're suggesting is to try to modify some of this language so it is somewhat easier to read for either petitioners, staff as well, and lay people, and to remove some of the overly repetitive language throughout the ordinance, again, just to make it easier to read and understand uh, for everyone. Uh, those are on nearly all the pages, and again, those changes are highlighted in yellow. Um, I can be happy to answer any questions you might have or any 
issues you might have with some of the suggested language we're recommending. Thank you, Mr. Hodges. Mayor? Yeah, so some of the, specifically the language here in blue, um, with the small antenna, small cell antenna, is this dealing a lot with the 5G protocol that's being rolled out, or is this something I'm... I don't know if it was specifically related to that. Most of it, it was, they came about the, those changes were adopted by the FCC in 2015. Okay. So I don't know if we, if it was known marketing-wise as the 5G system at that point. But I believe they may be somewhat related. Okay. Um, they were changes that the industry sought to have the FCC modify their standards to <clears throat> make it easier for them to implement uh, small cells and uh, it's kind of had been the history with the FCC since the adoption of the Federal Act in 1996. Uh, they seem to be willing to modify their procedures to make it easier for the industry to implement certain things. This was one of them. Okay. So the FCC, and what we're doing is we're basically making our ordinances compliant with federal law or Correct. federal regulation. What happens if we don't do anything? I mean, I'm just, I, I, um, I know, I kind of know the answer to the question, but, you know. Well, when someone applies for a, a small cell system, I guess we'll find out if we don't. <laughs> uh, for, we haven't had any, any uh, that have come in that have needed a site plan approval. Uh, most of the ones I've seen have been just administrative approval of co-locating on existing facilities. So but if it, it, but it if hasn't been an issue to date. But and maybe this is a question for Mr. Liss. They would have the ability to, the petitioner would have the ability if they wanted to install one and our ordinances weren't up to date and we were to deny them based on our ordinances that weren't in compliance with the FCC, they would be able to file, I imagine, you know, some sort of complaint suit or whatever, and that would be remedied relatively quickly, I imagine. Yes. With damages. There has also been, there's also changes in schedule coming from the state legislature basically to do the same thing, to comply with FCC regulations and allow the industry <clears throat> more leeway. Uh, 5G technology they're talking about requires a lot more uh, installations. It's very short range, although it does have capacity for far more data. But by, I guess, because we had even Monday night, we had some folks, and I appreciate them coming out uh, from the neighborhoods and, and, you know, rightfully so, questioning. I mean, this is, I think, everyone's been talking about 5G, been talking about the bandwidth. Um, I don't know as much as perhaps I should know on it, but what I do know is if we support at least this blue language here, it's not necessarily an endorsement of small cells or of 5G bandwidth or anything like that. It's saying, hey, we kind of, our hand is being forced a little bit. We have to do it. I mean, we could choose not to, but then the resistance that we run into is going to cost us some money on the legal side, and inevitably we're going to lose anyways. Do I understand that correctly? I think so. Okay. I just want to make sure that, you know, folks know that the city isn't going around installing these or making it possible. It's, you know, the FCC that's permitting it, and we can't really stand in the way. And if we do, it could cost us. And I would add, you'll notice that the, the language is simply modifying language that was already in there. Right. So we had some provisions to already address some of these issues. And we're just simply trying to change it to be consistent with the federal law. So it's not like it wasn't there and it's brand new. Right. Any other question, questions about Mr. Kluster? Uh, I just I'm just searching for a clarification on um, some of the co-location terminology. Um, the hypothetical being, any building wanted to put a small cell structure like on their parapet, et cetera, is that currently allowed? Does this new text language modify that? Well, our current language doesn't specifically address small cells, uh, but there are current standards that do allow co-location of what are defined as attached wireless communication facilities, i.e. antennas, on either existing buildings or existing uh, support structures or existing uh, utility poles within rights of way. And then so under two kind of defines the like ten foot above the existing. Yep. Okay. Yep. 
and that's not new that was in there it's just being amended to be appropriate to the new regulations. yeah the, the regulations that came out from the FCC basically said you know you you know it, when you review those these are the standards you must apply um, that's where the standards in blue under uh, so paragraph 2a through D on page 5 come from you know the FCC regulations are basically spelled out in great detail what community what items the communities must look at when reviewing them and we're not allowed to go beyond those parameters or further restrict them than what's permitted by the FCC any other questions Ms. Beaky uh, um, since we had talked about that current the the recent um, tower going up I've been looking at different towers and looking around where the towers are and, and noticing them on the horizon more and stuff and so I'm wondering um, I see here like there's a change under C D that previously the language was to say the setback in the structure was from any kind of residential and now it's being um, blocked out and putting just one family residential or one family large lot but at the same time we have kind of we're, we're increasing our numbers of multifamily units and, and condos and so I'm wondering what the logic is in, in not having similar setbacks for other kinds of residential um, as, it, as it previously stated on CD in, in the sense of protecting people's sure. well, views and such. Uh, the main reason we we're changing it to specific don't zoning district is right now there's no set parameters or definition of the zoning orders on what is a residential zoning district. Obviously, yes, one family residential, one family large lot, even multiple family residential can be considered a residential zoning district, but then we allow residential uses in just about every other zoning district except general industrial. Mm. Uh, for example, mixed use one, mixed use two. Are those residential zoning districts or could they be defined as a residential zoning district? It, something that hasn't been you know, clarified or settled. So what we'd like to do instead of applying just generic type of a zoning district, i.e. residential, to define the actual districts that the setback would be required. Uh, we haven't included multiple uh, family zoning districts from them because I'm not sure exactly how many would be affected by it, but it's something that could be easily added in. Uh, but mostly we just wanted to clarify that it's from those districts and not others that could you know, be challenged and say, well, you allow dwelling units in this zoning district, therefore it's a residential zoning district and the setback should apply. Uh, instead of trying to apply a standard to just a generic term of different districts, we thought it best to spell out the exact zoning districts where the setback would apply. And then under um, under A1E, about minimizing the negative visual impact of wireless communication facilities um, on neighborhoods, community landmarks, historic sites, etc. <coughs> this is a very challenging one because there's one thing when you're close to the tower. On the one hand, like if, it, if a tower is tall, 150, 250 uh, feet, if it's next to other tall buildings, when you're near it, 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 and even when you see it from a distance, it blends in more. But when it's out in the middle of like a green space, or if it's, or even like the one that's going to be now in the downtown, it's not going to bother anymore. We've worked on the screening at the ground level, but it's going to be from the distances where it's more intruding on people's visual. And obviously, that's a big uh, challenge to uh, work on the visual impact. But I'm wondering when there's an application made for these types of towers. Again, we didn't see any um, we didn't see any um, renderings of the height or the aesthetic of the tower other than the ground level on this last one we addressed. And I'm just wondering when they apply. I see something here that says there, there should be some kind of assessment of whether towers are in the area so that you might have co-location, which again minimizes visual because there's fewer of them. But I'm wondering also if there has to be rendering so you see, take into consideration how it's being viewed. Because again, when I think about these towers, now that I keep noticing them everywhere on the side of the highway, here, there, and then I think about Royal Oak, I think to myself, like if I were to put a tower somewhere that's going to be the least intrusive, I think about Beaumont's parking lot or the Meyer parking lot or someplace that's kind of, there's no one around to look at it except cars, people coming out of their cars. Whereas then when I see it in other places, even the side of the highway, it's quite obtrusive to the view of there's a nice field or a farm and then there's a wireless tower. Um, 
So I guess, do they have to show anything about the aesthetic impact when they apply is one question. And then the last question I have um, is, do we have any height limits that we impose or can impose? I, didn't, I don't think I saw them here, and I'm just wondering if that's something that's desirable either for, for the same reason as far as the aesthetics go. Well, the answer to the first one on page 7 and then on to 8, mm -hmm. it does list the uh, what their, um, let me, am I get the right section? Uh, nope, I'm not. Scratch that. I'm starting on the bottom of page 9 and then continuing on to 10 uh, under subsection D, application requirements list all of the materials they are. Uh, required to provide. Um, I don't think we have anything specifically that addresses some of the aesthetic issues you're looking at. That's one thing we could possibly add to, but it is also something that in any application before the Planning Commission that you could ask for them to provide or that during a review, uh, the staff review of one week can uh, just administratively well, ask I them think, to provide. I think part of the issue is you're referencing at the beginning is a provision that you're looking at as a body versus an ordinance provision, meaning you're going to take each site as it's presented to you and each tower as it's presented to you and determine whether it needs mitigating or whether it needs some uh, adjustment to it. If you put it in an ordinance and says everybody's got to do blank, then everybody's got to do that unless you grant them a waiver. So I think the first sentence up there lays a burden on, or the first section you are referring to lays a burden on you as part of your review when it's in front of you to make a determination on is there any impact and if so what do you want it what do you want them to do to mitigate it the submission requirements are you know they'll if if you need more detail just as you did with the most recent proposal you ask them to submit more detail um, staff will ask them to submit and address various issues when it gets in front of you if you have other issues that you need more detail on you will ask that I, I don't think we can do a comprehensive list that's going to generate every one of the Planning Commission's concerns or issues uh, for every potential site because again we don't know where they're at in terms of location you are going to get them all over town because uh, you can't just locate one in the Myers parking lot and that serves everybody's needs and we do have them all over town we have them on top of the parking decks we have them on top of Washington Square building the uh, we are trying to co-locate them so you don't have a support structure um, they are generally not put on the parapet wall. We try to get them to put back <clears throat> the equipment sheds. So there's a lot of things we're doing to keep these uh, antennas less intrusive as, as possible. But um, I don't know that we can write an ordinance provision that says they'll do A, B, and C, and D in every site because then, then you're going to be granting waivers or saying that doesn't apply for every site. I think we'll keep it a little generic. And then as part of your review, is there anything historic or is there anything that's on that particular location, a case by case, that needs to be addressed? Ms. Beakey? I guess my question is more like, is, is there, because I think at the beginning of this you were saying you're trying to make this so that the fewer things would come to us, so therefore staff would be addressing them. If there's a, a look at the 3D impact versus the 2D, because looking at a map is one thing, but looking at it overall with the other buildings around it, I guess is another thing in terms of a rendering to understand it, the visual impact, I guess is what I'm saying. And most of the ones on top of the buildings, I think, would be less intrusive than the one we saw um, recently. Um, but again, I would agree with how you would determine it would be appropriate. But my thing was more about the 3D versus 2D um, rendering. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Hedges? Not seeing one open the public hearing. Um, rules of the public hearing. Um, raise your hand. I'll welcome you up and you have three minutes. Well, Mr. Razor. Um, <clears throat> you know, I first have to say, um, I've lived here and had my business here for 25 years, and it wasn't lightly that all of you know that 
I filed a lawsuit against the city based on that cell tower that was approved. And it wasn't a decision that was taken lightly. I mean, it wasn't my first choice or my 10th or my 50th, but it was the right choice. And let me tell you, this zoning ordinance amendment is specifically designed to deal with the issues in the litigation. Let me give you an example. Page 8, subsection H, I'm sorry, I, changes support structure shall be of an alternative design to may be of an alternative design. That's directly changed because it's one of the central issues in the litigation. Your city attorney had input into these changes. It was given to you, and they're trying to sell this to you as something that's good for the city. We have a clear legislative intent here that support structures shall be an alternative design, such as a statue, sculpture, steeple, bell, or clock tower, flagpole, tree, or other form. Now, this is being softened, so you can have ugly industrial buildings, big, huge support structures in your downtown, regardless of who is on this board or when that happens. All this yellow language is designed for the litigation, not designed to make a change, and it strips you folks of your discretion in terms of making a lot of the decisions. You bring up a great point about residential districts. And my point in the litigation was the downtown is a residential district and this is a horribly ugly thing. And it should be a setback back because of the visual impact of the height. Well, they want to change that so it doesn't apply to your downtown. And these are not changes that you requested at your last meeting. These are changes that were made for litigation. And when you consider this, look at the list of reasons that you should change your zoning ordinances, which is on the first page of the write-up. None of these include pending litigation. They include court orders. There's been no court order. There's been no legislative changes. You're, you're, you're being misled. And let me tell you what else you've been misled about. Oakland County had other alternatives that they didn't explore for the tower. There's a huge tower that's over 300 feet tall at 696 and I-75. They didn't explore it. There's a new 300-foot tower being built by Rackham that they didn't explore for the downtown tower. Now, when Birmingham and Pontiac were faced with this, and Pontiac has a lot denser buildings, they forced Oakland County to go up with other solutions, and that's why they don't have a huge tower in their downtown. So here's my ask. At this meeting, you can vote to reconsider your site plan approval, and you can see the evidence that Oakland County failed to consider a tower being built at Rackham by the Michigan State Police. They failed to consider a, a tower owned by MDOT at 696 and I-75, and those towers would serve us just as well as the out-of-town towers in the industrial districts of Birmingham and Pontiac. And I think when you see that you were misled by Oakland County when they came here and they told you that the only alternative was this huge, ugly, out-of-place, awful tower in our downtown, when you see that you were misled, I think you should take the opportunity today. I think you should reconsider your site plan. I think you can put that off until another meeting so that you have all the evidence. And I think what you're going to find is that Oakland County is diligently pursuing now these options because now that this has been exposed, now at the zoning board meeting when they indicated that they never considered options. And they didn't consider options because they don't get along with MDOT. Thank you, Mr. Razor. Thank you very much. I have some prepared remarks that I would like to give to Mr. Hedges because in three minutes I couldn't include them all. It's very nice seeing you all. Happy holidays. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, that's it. We'll close the public hearing. Bring it back to this side of the table. Um, Mr. Twain, are you looking for? Well, if you're supportive of the revisions, you would uh, have a resolution that would uh, recommend them to the city commission as a tax amendment um, and they would be forwarded up to the city commission for their consideration at a future meeting if you have questions that you want staff to address um, we would also do that um, there is a suggested resolution on page two of the report if you're comfortable with it that would forward it to the city commission Okay. Um, but you have the ability to uh, take action 
postpone, uh, be supportive, ask revisions of the text amendment. Um, again, as Doug said, and we've indicated, there's a, uh, three purposes of the uh, the ordinance revisions uh, to address uh, various issues. Thank you, Ms. Beaky. I, I guess I just wanted to follow up a little bit on what I was saying because, and, and again, separate from that, um, the comments about the lawsuit because I haven't seen any of that information or I'm I, all, I'm aware that it is happening, but I have no awareness of the details. But when I read this, and again, considering what we have seen and considering looking at the aesthetics of those towers, um, like I say, quite a bit in the last couple months since we started addressing this issue, I guess personally, I agree that to me that that tower doesn't have a place in this space and, and unless someone else could convince me why. And, and this is the reason I'm concerned about that particular tower on the at and lot. And again, I think the aesthetics at the ground level we addressed, but its existence we didn't really um, in terms of its height and some of those things. And, and if I understood properly what was presented to us, the county needs a 250 foot tower for safety and security. The police need a shorter one, which now has been attached to this tower. And AT&T wants a tower, which I assume they would presume we wouldn't give them permission for without attaching it to public safety. That's my assumption, which would also be, they said shorter, but they would go along with this one to combine the three. And all I want to say is I, I have been supporting that tower, recognizing that I'm assuming, because we're not part of these discussions, that the county and the city and AT&T and whomever else is involved with the potential of co-location have, have exhausted other potential. Because if there are existing taller towers, which I'm not aware of the ones he suggested until he just said that, to me, it would be smarter to have that somewhere else and have the minimal size in our close downtown to what we need. This language in and of itself, most of it I'm okay with in terms of a first reading. But again, considering that tower and, and that going forward, it does feel like it's a retrofit to that situation, which again, I'm stating just having read it by itself, not knowing what the details of any of that other um, business is. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you, Ms. Beakey. Any other comments or a motion? Motion to support the offered resolution on page two of our memo. Mr. Kloster to follow the um, uh, support on page two. Is that the first paragraph, Mr. Kloster? Um, whereas the planning commission held a public hearing. Correct. Is that whole? Uh, is three it the paragraphs. three paragraphs? Okay. Is there support for this? Support. Support by Ms. Douglas. Any discussion? Mayor. To say in general, I mean, I think most of the changes uh, seem appropriate. Obviously, this is going to go to the City Commission. We have a little additional food for thought to think about uh, based on the public hearing. Um, so um, I don't have an issue supporting this now. And, um, you know, but certainly there's a reason why we have multiple, um, you know, processes when it comes to the ordinances. So um, still keep an open mind, but I think the changes recommended by staff uh, I generally support at the moment. Any other discussion on this motion? Not seeing all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I guess I'll say no. Okay, so four to one. Uh, it moves on to the city commission. Okay, on to other business. <clears throat> This is a signed variance to a request to install freestanding sign with electronic message center for a retail store, Tennis and Golf Company, while maintaining non-conforming freestanding sign at 30211 Woodward Avenue. Mr. Twain. Uh, this shopping center, which uh, includes the Tennis and Golf, has two freestanding signs, uh, one, at, one at the north end of the site. Uh, as, as you'll see in the report, has a height of 20 feet on a sign area of 100 square feet. And one at the south end, uh, which is approximately 22 feet in height, and a sign area of 70, roughly 78 square feet. Um, the freestanding signs are allowed under this sign area to have 
a maximum height of 16 feet and a maximum sign area of 42 square feet. Uh, so both signs are, are non-conforming under the sign ordinance. Um, the uh, shopping center um, does have sufficient frontage, um, over, th over 300 feet of frontage, uh, to have two uh, freestanding signs. Uh, so that's not a, a, an issue as far as having two signs, but both signs are too tall and too big. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to replace the freestanding sign at the south end of the site uh, and leaving the one at the north end in place as it is. Uh, the new sign would have a height of 14 feet and a sign area of uh, 68, roughly 69 square feet. Uh, <coughs> the proposed sign would, would exceed the maximum square footage uh, and therefore, uh, they're requesting a variance uh, uh, from the Planning Commission. The new sign, freestanding sign, would also have an electronic message center uh, of approximately 29 square feet. Uh, the maximum that's allowed under the sign area is, would be equal to half the uh, freestanding sign area, or in this case, 21 uh, square feet. Uh, so they would need another variance in order to obtain that. Because the ordinance doesn't allow uh, non-conforming signs to remain when they're proposing a new one, uh, you would also need to address the uh, uh, north freestanding sign and, and grant a, a variance to allow it to remain uh, uh, in terms of its height and size, uh, possibly until uh, that sign is either modified or adjusted in the future. You can address it then. But those are the <coughs> variances that uh, you would have to address based on this request. Any questions for Mr. Twain? Is the petitioner here? Welcome. Your name, please? Uh, my name is Haytham Situ with Situ Industries at 44731 Woodward Avenue, uh, Pontiac, Michigan, uh, representing the, uh, the business owner at uh, Tennis and Golf. Uh, first of all, good evening, and uh, uh, thank you very much for allowing us to be here today. Uh, as you know, uh, year after year, uh, businesses uh, are uh, declining uh, local business, brick and mortar, to online uh, shopping and such. And um, uh, this particular location uh, is no different than any other business. And so for them to thrive, they're looking at um, uh, expanding their marketing opportunity, and an LED sign is the best way to go. Um, here the situation is, uh, because of the size, I believe, is, uh, is in question, um, we were proposing to lower the sign substantially rather than just reface the existing sign, uh, leaving it where it is. Um, we're lowering it, l reducing this overall square footage, even reducing the width a little bit just to help out as much as we can. Um, Woodward Avenue is a very, very busy uh, road. and. Um, uh, in no means is this sign uh, larger uh, than many of the other signs on Waterford Avenue. Not saying that it's uh, detrimental, but uh, for that speed and that that's, that kind of traffic uh, and that kind of setback and the amount of trees that this particular property has, um, it, it actually dwarfs um, uh, in comparison. The, uh, the height, um, Currently, is set, we set it at 84 inches above ground just to be able to clear. There's a little um, uh, wall uh, right there at the sidewalk also. So we're trying to get the best of both worlds, uh, clearing the vehicles that are parked next to it, as well as avoiding treetops that, that would hinder the, uh, the, uh, the, the, up, you know, the taller signage. Um, like any other business, local business, they're, they're struggling to keep uh, things moving. And the only other way to advertise, obviously, is to the local public. I mean, even if you get on uh, the internet to look for a local business to shop, as you know, you probably have, um, Google and Amazon will probably pop up and drive you away to businesses that are thousands of miles away or probably in another country, even if you're looking for a local business. So the, uh, the business owner here is, uh, wants to maximize the opportunity with their sign. Uh, they opted to go with a very uh, high-end quality LED display that is a 13-millimeter full-color. 
Uh, not to say that it's going to be used in any gaudy way or anything, but the clarity of it is that where it would look like a photographic image more than a pixelated, uh, an old, cheap-looking kind of sign. It will conform in all ways. It will be photo cell sensitive, <coughs> so that means it will conform uh, in accordance to the ambient light. Uh, there will be absolutely no motion or video or flashing or any of those uh, kind of criteria. Uh, additionally, uh, it is a centrally, centrally controlled uh, cellular service controlled. So what that means is it allows us to uh, support just as we do with other cities, for example, Amber Alerts, uh, emergency uh, situations the city or the state government requires, they would uh, send a message and that could be uh, displayed automatically on the, on the uh, display as well. Um, I think that pretty much <coughs> answers all the, or addresses the situation uh, we have at this location, and uh, I welcome any questions you might have. Um, uh, the, the size is based on modulars, uh, and we're an actual manufacturer, and uh, uh, we're actually on Woodward Avenue, just north of Square Lake, next to St. Joseph Hospital. Um, uh, modular displays, they're made in, in, in sections, that's how we create the certain sizes and such. Um, we came up with the size because it was an ideal visually. We went back and forth and looked at other uh, businesses in the area and, and other signs in the area, and it didn't seem to be that out of the norm uh, for Woodward Avenue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? I have a question. Um, maybe I'm. Uh, been going back and forth, the, the existing sign is 22 feet in height. They want to decrease it to 14 feet yes. in height. Right. And that's still too high? No. I, that's, the height's okay. It's the area. The area and the size of the uh, electronic message center. Okay. So this air, the sign, the area of the sign plus the area of the messaging right. on the sign. Okay. Yeah. Are we? I'm sorry. Yeah. Remind Excuse me again, me. and I'm having a. You know, it's been a long week. The area Excuse when we talk me. about the sign, we're talking about the entire sign or just the non-message board part of the sign. You're talking about the frame around the, the frame around. So the entire sign. sign. The entire okay. sign. All right. It's not just the words. So the message board is. The message board is the frame as part well. of the overall overage, right. but it's over within itself, within its category. I, I believe yeah. the way the ordinance is written is the electronic message sort can't be more than half of the allowed freestanding sign. The, the allowed is 42 square feet, uh, so the max would be 21. This one's 78, I think. Or max would be 21 square feet, yes. And this, and they're asking for. 29.19. 29, 29, 29, sorry. 29, okay, there we go. 29. Yeah, 29. Okay. 29.03. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Douglas. So why does it say, why does point item C waive four feet from maximum <coughs> permitted 16-foot height? That's the existing sign on the north end that they're north. not touching. Right. So what we're saying is waive that because it's the ordinance applies to both signs there. We okay. have to waive to keep All the existing right. one there. Okay, got it. So we're looking we're at both. Of, we're looking well. at both we of them. Yeah, the, the ordinance doesn't allow you to keep to put in a new sign and keep a non-conforming sign. Understood. So we have to look at so both. So you've of got them. to address both the signs. Okay. Thank and, you. And is the other sign conforming in terms of overall size? Do any of these other letter points deal with that sign? Uh, the last two, C and D. It's too big. It is Got too it. tall. Okay. So you're, you're, you're dealing with the height and the square footage of that sign as well. So the other sign would have to be modified as well. If you denied it. If you grant the waiver to leave the north sign, then it can stay. Okay. And is that... I think that, if I may interject, um, I think the way they have it written here is to basically just carve out the north sign and just say you're going to waive... The, correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, the four foot and the 58 square feet from the maximum square footage just because 
you know, we're really talking about this sign on the south side that we're making changes to with the... Well, understand, this is their request. Right. In order to grant... The way you wrote it up is to keep that you, sign the same. You, you could tell them to change that one as well. Sure, sure. This is not a staff suggestion. This is... I'm just trying to explain the way you wrote right. it up. Right. The way you wrote it up is based, is on, based on their, their request proposal. to keep the sign on the north exact untouched. It, right. To ignore it. And to right. do that, you have to you wave. Do it. that, you have to wave these provisions. The the we have to wave more height, and well, more square footage, more everything. Right? Okay, got it. Can I ask a push question? Yeah, I'm Miss Beaky. Uh, the the sign on the north, that's the one that is to be well potentially grandfathered <clears> in. <throat> it has multiple businesses listed on it. Is that right? Yes, yes ma'am. Those are the other tenants the that bottom. are. Okay. Oh, I see. There's a bigger one down here. Sorry, I'm looking at the. But but but. If it has multiple businesses on it, it still pertains only to this business, though, That's or to the whole complex? It's all Those signage are, on the site. I see, because it's considered as a unit because the site is one unit. Okay. Not because it's one business, because it's by the street. All right. And we're not consider, considering, <clears throat> pardon me, any of these signs on the building. This is just the pole sign. Right. Okay. okay. Um, so if we were to, oh, never mind, I'll, pa I'll push the pause button for a moment. <laughs> well, you can, you can deal with them totally separately. Again, they're listed as individual items. You can deal with the self sign, which is the one being planned for being proposed, uh, and you can deal with the square footage of that sign, which is A. Uh, you can deal with B, which is the electronic message center sign. Those those two deal with the existing sign. Or I mean not the existing, the proposed sign. C and D deal with the north uh, sign that's existing and not proposed to change. Eric has a question. Or you can deal with it all at once. Eric has a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kloster. Uh, yeah, so I think we've, at least in the recent history, we've been <coughs> fairly consistent in how we've handled sign variances that come in front of this commission. And when we get a chance to ask <coughs> to make signs comply with the ordinance, we tend to go that way with the exception of extenuating circumstances um, and in this in this situation I, I don't see extenuating circumstances that would um, lean me towards suggesting that we allow these signs to continue to be non-conforming I, I would agree I I, we were saying is we should be dealing with both sides through, through the, this body. Okay. I would agree with that, too. Any, any further discussion, questions for Petitioner, Mr. Twing, or Just a motion? Question. Ms. Douglas. Is Tennis and Golf Company paying for the sign changes, or is the landlord? Exactly, ma'am. It's tennis and golf, so they have really have nothing to do with the overall property. And so. Please. Yes. Uh, your name? Um, Andy Shepard. I am one of the owners of the Tennis and Golf Company. Uh, we just purchased this out of bankruptcy in uh, April 29th, uh, trying to save a local business. And honestly, we're doing this because the existing sign is a complete eyesore, and we're trying to make an improvement to the overall appearance of the plaza and to our business. Um, I guess the alternative is that sign just remains. Um, we are paying for the sign. It's a $30,000 sign. Um, the landlord is not contributing to it at all. And because that sign addresses our building or our business and the other sign addresses the other businesses in there, um, I understand how you're looking at it as a unit, but it doesn't have anything to do with us as a tenant. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Ms. Beakey, 
I guess, um, as, as Tim was suggesting earlier, like considering the two signs separately, if we set aside the sign in the north that pertains to the whole plaza and look at this sign alone, if I'm understanding correctly, if it were to go into compliance, the LED portion should be a little bit smaller, basically. Is that correct? But the overall sign is more or less. It, it, or the more overall sign would be compliant if the LED portion had been it made a little. No, I'm incorrect. No, you're about 30 square feet over the allowed. Oh, 30 square feet is a area. lot. Okay. I have a, May I? On that same thought, though, what's this, the square footage of the existing sign right now? Remind me uh, again what that is. The existing one is on 78 the south square the feet. North. 100. On the south end? Setting a clause. Yeah, the about south, the south end. one. The one we're talking about. The one they want to buy or yes. purchase. The one that says tennis and golf. 78 square feet is the existing sign. Yeah. Okay. They're proposing 68.9. So, so they are doing a proposal that knocks it down two feet below the 16 foot. And the then below, they are, the, the height complies, the and square the, footage does not. The square footage doesn't comply, but it's also less square footage than what it is today. So it is an improvement. It's just not meeting the requirements. And, and I guess, for, oh, sorry. Can I? Yeah, please speak. Um, and I guess considering that specific spot with that setback in the lawn, I'm wondering if it being a little bit larger is reasonable given the setback because some of the places on Woodward are very close, like the parking and everything is right on the street. And this one particularly has actually has a setback, which a lot of them don't as you come um, further south. But anyway, so again, either A, to make it in compliance would be just to make it a little bit smaller or significantly smaller, I guess 30 square feet is significant. Um, if they were to do that and we were just, just, then we would have to waive just the north sign staying if they were to agree to make it smaller. Otherwise, we have to give the agreement for both. Mr. Twing, um, maybe you mentioned this, I, and I apologize if you did. If this was a brand new, this was just built, would, and they came forward, they, would they be allowed to have two pole signs? For this, yes. this so, um, the, the ordinance allows you if you if you got more than three hundred square uh, linear feet of frontage, you can have two pole signs on okay. the site. Thank you. So the number isn't an issue; it's height, size. Okay. okay. Mayor. Yeah, I mean, I think in the past we've also had a precedent where if the sign improves, like as far as you know, it shrinks. It, it goes down in height. I know we waived it. I think what might be a little different in this case is, um, you know, the electronic, the size of the electronic messaging board. It, it is eight square feet, which doesn't seem like a, a lot when you're driving by, but, you know, we haven't been too um, overly uh, ecstatic about um, electric messaging signs in our community because not everyone, you know, has the same... You can't control the content. You can't control rightfully so freedom of speech. And this, under the new Supreme Court ruling, it becomes even more difficult for us to, you know, go from something that people appreciate to something that people dread in the neighborhood, regardless if it's on Woodward or, you know, anywhere else. We've been very cautious, and I You're think rightfully correct, so about uh, that. Mayor. As a matter of fact, the city of Troy called our company to help them with the new ordinance because someone suit the city and they ended up with those massive billboards uh, all over the place and I, I i agree with you to that extent and um there's several i mean churches and other businesses that are far beyond the 32 square feet even uh, 32 mm -hmm. 48 square feet that you have in the city mm -hmm. and um the way that we control it is by uh we upgraded the software content uh, dramatically we actually took the the motion part of it out of the uh, end users control so that uh, they cannot even uh, have that motion video features uh, on their display as well as the brightness sensors we took that away because we a lot of ordinances uh, you know they'll get passed and then next thing you know at night is blaring and it's bright and, and so on so all those features are done on the backside now uh, so that we help this, a lot of cities enforce those uh, codes and regulations, as well as the timing. Uh, we make that as a default. For example, uh, the city, I believe, requires a 30-second minimum uh, before changes, and that's also implemented as a standard rather than uh, I suggested uh, something on the, on the server, on the uh, client side. So they actually have to log in to make those changes uh, uh, on the server, which are, are already preset. So it limits those capabilities. And, and they do get uh, a nice software that allows them to put graphics on there rather than um, pixelated images that don't uh, 
look right. And uh, if you notice also, uh, their logo, the tennis and golf logo up there, is small. It's nice, unique. It's 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 pretty. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if you've been to this location. It caters to families and such. Uh, the previous owner, I think, uh, half half a million dollars and in renovation in this place. It's absolutely amazing. And this is just something to help enhance, to uh, help them th uh, thrive and, and, and you know, try to advance to the next uh, generation. Thank you. So, uh, Ms. Douglas. Well, I just, I'm, I mean, irrespective of my antipathy for digital signs, I feel that, being, and Mr. Sitto referred to the speed of traffic going by, and knowing that the, the closest traffic signal is Webster, and that, you know, I mean, people get a real head of steam going between 12 and 13 mile, um, and I'm just concerned about people trying to read whatever it says, um, and, you know, I mean, I'm concerned about the safety issue here. Um, and if we tell them to take it down to 42 square feet to, to what is permitted, then you're going to have a little tiny and even worse um, electric message sign here. Um, so, you know, again, I'm, I'm willing to be the guinea pig here and take a swing at this um, and move that we deny, where am I, uh, a... B, A, and B, um, and approve C and D. That is my, to leave the existing other sign there um, as it is, um, but to ask the store to comply with the ordinance. And if they can squeeze an electronic sign in there, I mean, we, that's fine. Um, but I want to see this sign comply with the ordinance. Okay, is there support? The motion was made to deny A and B and to approve C and D. No support. Is there another motion? Mr. Kluster. Uh, motion to deny all requested variances. Motion to deny A, B, C, and D. Is there support? No support. Is there another motion? Looks like we're running on combinations here. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just one second, sir. Yes, sir. So I think, I mean, I think by, well, I appreciate where Mr. Kluster is coming from by denying everything. I think what we do is we keep the status quo, and that is way out of compliance, right? So it doesn't really accomplish, you know, the goal of, you know, getting to a, a smaller sign and a shorter sign and maybe a more aesthetically pleasing sign. Um, I do think that you know, in the spirit of, of trying to get there and aiming to get there and improving the situation. I, I, I'm more leaning, and I, and I don't know if we can even do it with the aspect ratios that we have required in our, but if, I, you know, I'm more willing, because it's on Woodward, I think Ms. Beaky makes a good point. There's a setback there a little bit more than some normal signs, like to, to support A, C, and D, um, but if we can get in compliance with the electronic element on it, I think that would make me a lot more comfortable, uh, but I'm not sure based on the dimensions of the sign uh, if we can hit the aspect ratio without, I don't know, changing the messaging area. But I think that to me would be a, um, given the area it's in, a reasonable compromise. But I want to hear from my colleagues. Ms. Beaky. I guess to me, um, Again, I, there seems to be a proliferation of preferences for these LED signs, which when I see them, I don't feel like I can read any of them, and they just seem like a total waste, personally, to me. Um, and so I would be inclined to want to approve this, this new tennis and golf sign within compliance of what the ordinance says, which moving it down as you've done, but then shrinking the face, and if you have to give up 
part of the LED sign and just have a good sign for your business that's more visible, I mean, that would be my personal preference. Um, but I'm okay with separating the two signs and addressing them separately in general. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, let me try this. Let me split this into two. Um, because it seems like there's a, I mean, there are opinions about the second sign and let's decide what we're going to do with the second sign and then deal with the tennis and golf sign. Um, so I'm going to mo uh, make a motion to um, approve C and D. I can't find the name. That means just leave the second sign as it is. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm going to try. I would second that just to get it off the <coughs> table. To approve C and D. So to allow the second sign to remain. And maybe there are five of us, you know, we vote on it. We may, we've made a decision. So, and you're not addressing E and B at all? Not right now. So, so I have a logic question that I figure you guys can answer. You're a lot smarter than I am. I see what you're trying to do. But by approving C and D, does that create any sort of... Um, <clears throat> it seems like C and D are, they are more conditional upon... You know, doing Ify. something with the with the south end sign, but is there any danger uh, breaking it apart and doing C and D because the property owner or the petitioners for C and D haven't come here? Does this lock this into some sort of approval, or does it already have an approval? I imagine. And it, does it prevent? Let me let me ask it a different way. If the people or the individuals that own the the mall there come to us and they want to change their sign. Because we vote on this and we approve C and D, are they now we lose that opportunity to bring them into compliance moving forward at a future date? Well, the, the, the sign ordinance is set up in such a way that it's not intended to grant you continued use. If you want to be clear, you could approve C and D subject to it. Uh, um, any future revision would require compliance. So you grant it to stay in its current configuration, and if if they need a permit to reface it or redo it, then they'd have to bring it into compliance. Okay. But you could leave it the way it is now. To answer your first part of your question, if, if they brought you a sign for tennis and golf that complied with the sign ordinance, I believe the building department would still say they need a variance to leave the north sign. Okay. So you'd okay. still be dealing with C and D regardless whether this one complies. So we can put a little um, <coughs> catch in there to protect right. the city um, as to not give a free license to the non petitioners. Yeah, just while also for clarity. And then if it passes, then we're still protected then to get compliance. And then, you know, the petitioner here then has options at least if this is the only motion that passes. They won't have to come back here and, and then, and unless notwithstanding, we do something different with A and B you know, after this motion. <clears throat> Ms. Beaky. I didn't hear a support yet, though. Can I, I, can I uh, support? Ms. Beaky supported it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. There was support I, I, on that? And I, don't, I didn't hear a support. I, I supported it if we're splitting it. I think I did support that. If I'm understanding that we're going to separate. As long as it's not going to mess up the city in the future in terms of getting a potential, uh, a, a possibility of addressing that sign. I wanted to ask one question, if I could, to the petitioner. Can sure. I? I want to ask, have you talked to the owner at all, given this denial about addressing that other sign, because it's also not in compliance? If that's not your sign, the other one, has there been any discussion with that landowner or the building owner about addressing this problem so that you could bring that forward at the same time? No, as far as I understood, they didn't, I mean, they have a variance when that sign was erected. And they assume it's still? Correct. Okay. But you haven't tried to influence them, and they have not suggested they're coming forward to update their sign. <laughs> no, that sign's, they have no intention of changing it. Okay. So I'm, I, I don't think I'll support this. I, I think this is an opportunity to deal with these signs on Woodward the way we've been doing it. We did it with Arby's. We just did it with somebody else recently. I can't remember who. Um, and it's working out well. And now we have another opportunity. I understand your situation. I appreciate you coming in here. I, I, I don't think the LED sign's a winner on on this. I live down Webster, and I come through here, and the traffic flies down here. I don't know what an L LED sign's going to help you at all. That's 
my opinion. But I just think we have an opportunity here to um, manage this these, this uh, signage down here, and I, I don't want to have a missed opportunity. I can appreciate the, the asterisk that you're throwing our way, Tim, that we might have an opportunity down the road, but I, I just I can't support this. Well, just to be clear, maybe, uh, maybe I misunderstood. Um, what I heard was if we support this motion on C and D, then um, what that basically does is, um, you know, two things can happen. One, the Stein sign stays as it is. The or sign to the? To the south. To the, the south. The tennis north. sign stays as it is. Okay. Or two, um, maybe the petitioner decides to go back and, you know, get rid of the digital board or, you know, make the sign compliant with the digital board in the, in the, in the, in the square footage of the sign. And therefore, they don't have to worry about coming back and getting C and D. So you get that, you know what I mean. So, so he gets a, a short sign, and he and he meets, the, and he gets fifty-eight feet wave. No, 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 no. This is just C and D. This is just the way. Yeah, um, the D is way fifty-eight square feet from maximum permitted the north side. forty-two. Oh, that's the north. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the way I re I hear what you're saying, but I think what the way the motion is on the table, with the north sign, what we're essentially saying is. Um, if the petitioner comes back and wants to comply saying. with the sign ordinance and they don't have to come back with the other property owner, well, not other property, but the other stewards, you know, whoever okay. manages the sign, um, it doesn't take care of A and B, which we can address after this motion, but at least it gives the petitioner, even if they don't want to do it, at least the option to not have to come back here and get another waiver on this C and D if they decide to comply um, if A and B aren't approved. That's the way I understand it. My way crazy Eric's looking at Eric Eric can keep no. with my babble go ahead okay good you, thumbs up it's yeah, right or wrong it's it. right right I'm sorry I'm slowing the uptake I'm still so the south sign area is 42 square feet and the proposed sign area is 68 but we're not dealing with that nope just seeing the just yeah. the 21 oh that's the message okay so just, just because they don't the, have control over so the other proving, sign we're, right. we're trying to separate it we're proving this height here is 14 feet. No. No, that's a different. Uh, no. We're just allowing the north sign to stay the until the other property owner might come forward and, and want to change it, just because this this business cannot influence. Well, yeah, maybe we could try to make there. you influence, but. Mm -hmm. Can he? She's the chair. This is the north sign. Right. What they're proposing to. What the resolution is is to grant C and D, which are this to one let, and this to one. To let them have that. Okay. They haven't haven't done and the C and D are contingent on if they modify it in the future they have to come on. Okay. Or or get another variant. We're just unraveling You're their sign the, from the other one. With okay. this motion the net effect is we're unraveling, you know, having the to North do two sign. signs for the one because actually they wouldn't be able to I even think properly petition for the other property owner sign anyway, so it would be a moot null no point. That's why I went they, have, they have a company. Oh. Uh, yes, Ms. Douglas. And I kind of don't want to put them crosswise with their landlord. I mean, I'm just picturing the discussion where they, <laughs> they come back and say, yeah, we got our sign, but got bad news for you. Here's I mean, an X. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, given the circumstances here, I mean, you know, that's part of my rationale for not wanting to force this change on that north sign. Okay. It's rare that we have these I've heard parcels. from your land. Right. We've heard from your landlord in the past. Any other discussion on this? So the motion is to approve C and D. With the asterisk that if someone no, wants to change it. Until it's modified. Until, mm -hmm. Until they seek modification. And they is? The building owner. The landlord. The landlord, OK. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. Three to Three two. two. Three to two, it passes. Can I see a show of hands who was yes, who was no, please? Yes. No, I got him. Yes. But that basically just tables that sign. It unencumbers we'll, them from the other sign. And now we'll look at this sign. Yeah. Because we haven't voted on A and B yet. Right. Okay. Do you have any comment about making it in compliance? Oh, I should sorry. So are we We're good with C and D. Okay, are we done with this item, or are no, you? It's up to no. you guys. 
Uh, is there a, a and B? second motion? That's the hardest. To address A and B. I'll, I'll make a motion for A right now um, to allow for the variance of the overall area. I think my graver concern on this one is with um, <coughs> the electronic messaging, and maybe we carve that one out. Um, and my rationale is, um, again, with the setback, um, and hopefully creating a condition where we do get an improvement versus a, you know, non-improvement, meaning that the existing sign remains. Um, I do believe and I trust the petitioner that, you know, if some requests aren't granted, then the existing sign will remain there. And if we're saying that we want to see an improvement to these signs, i.e. being smaller and shorter, um, maybe we get it two feet shorter than what the maximum is, but the area is a little bit bigger. It's kind of a trade-off, maybe in some weird way, um, you know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that we uh, support uh, or that we uh, waive the 26.83 feet from the maximum permitted 42 square feet sign area proposed. Thereby allowing a 68.9 square foot sign. Correct. Okay. Here we not irregardless is not a word. I'm trying to learn my mother's teaching me grammar <laughs> every day. Um, regardless. She's still working on it. Uh, just, for <laughs> just for clarity, if you're not going to grant B, I would suggest you add denial of B, just for clarity of the motion. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I kind of want to talk about B afterwards. Okay. Uh, because I think that, you know, I'm going to hear all the logic with the electronic sign. Right. Um, if someone wants to make a motion to deny it and that's what the majority is, then, then that's what it is. I, I have a problem with the size of the electronic right. messaging board. As long as B is addressed. Then. Yeah, B will be addressed. All right. Is there support? There's a comment. <clears throat> I just have a question. If we allow the area with A and the ordinance reads up to half of the sign area, does that automatically allow the LED sign area as is since it's half of the sign area. No, the, the electronic message center is limited on the permitted sign area, so it's got to be half of 42 square feet. Okay. So 22, 21 square feet. So that's where we got to 21. I see. Is there support? To grant A. To grant A. No support. Okay. I want to make a, can I make a comment? I would support the larger sign, but with the smaller electronic. <laughs> no, no, not. That's what you're trying to get. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. That. Well, the motion, the motion that I put on the table said, hey, we're getting 10 <clears throat> square feet smaller sign, and we're getting a, you know, whatever drop by so many feet. And then if that area is approved, then from Mr. Kluster's question to Mr. Twing, my understanding is at max they could have a 21 square foot electronic sign on top of the overall square footage which uh, of the variance that so you would be able to still have if we looked at B we could either deny B and they just get a regular sign but it's bigger but smaller than what it is today but bigger than our ordinance or it's overall smaller than what we have today more than our ordinance but with an electronic message sign that you know complies if that's the the wish of the, the planet that's what I was trying to get to by separating out the electronic because maybe members here don't want to have electronic at all done and if they do make it comply motion could handle that but overall I'm saying the overall square footage I'm okay with because it gives them at least some incentive to um, reduce the overall size of it then handle these so that was why I proposed the motion the, the, yeah, the, the 68 square feet though includes the electronic message center which is, what is it now, 78 square foot, the overall sign? Right, At yes. 20 some odd feet, yeah. <clears throat> so did that fail for no support, or did you yes. support it? Mm -hmm. No, it was failed. Okay, is there a, another motion to address A and B, Mr. Kluster? Motion to deny variance A and variance B. There's a motion by Mr. Kluster to deny A and B. Is there support? Support by Ms. Douglas. Is there discussion? I'll just, Mayor. I'll just add, I appreciate that. Um, I just think that, you know, the result will be the existing sign. 
-hmm. So I'm betting that on my motion that didn't get support, uh, that that would be a better approach to get at least some, you know, reduction in the, the height as well as the, the size. So I, in a purist sense, I would support this, but in a practical sense, I'm uh, going to vote no. Any other discussion or comments? Uh, motion is to deny A and B by Mr. Kluster, supported by Ms. Douglas. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. I'll, I'll, I'll oppose also, even though it's not going to matter. So three to two. Mm -hmm. Douglas, Vara, Kluster voting mm, to deny. Okay. But just to be clear, the petitioners do have the option now that we've waived off the um, other sign, it's unencumbered, they can propose a new sign that meets the square footage with an electronic so and they don't have to come see us. No. Right. Or a new sign that doesn't have electronic that is the compliance. That you don't size. have to try to read going 50 miles an hour. Or keep the existing. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. Thank you. Sorry, Thank guys. you for coming in. We understand. <laughs> Next sign variant, so this is item two. It is a request to install a wall sign for professional office building tenant Gongos at 150 West 2nd Street. Um, very briefly, this is in uh, the downtown sign area three. Uh, the, the appeal is to allow uh, two wall signs on the same facade. Uh, as you're probably familiar, the sign ordinance only allows one on each facade. Uh, they are proposing one at the north end of the existing uh, office building uh, as highlighted in your, um, your drawings in your packet. There is an existing sign at the south end of the building uh, and so there are would be if you granted this two uh, wall signs. Uh, the square footage uh, of the proposed sign is 45 square feet. Uh, I believe the existing sign, if I can find it, um, is 15.66 square feet. Uh, they're, they're under the maximum allowed sign square footage, um, and that both signs would total uh, 60.77 7 square feet. And the maximum allowed would be 100 square feet of all signage. So they're proposing a second sign on the uh, west facade. Any questions for Mr. Twain? Petitioner? Jim Fields, Allied Signs, 33650 Giftos Drive, Clinton Township, Michigan. Um, We've installed a couple of the signs on this building as it is, and the visibility coming in on that west elevation to add a secondary sign, which would match the first, seemed very plausible and will help identification just because of the overall size and the stories of the building. Um, as far as the square footage with 100 square foot allowed with the actual size of the building and the plot, and aesthetically, it's pretty clean look. It's not highlighted. It's not facelit. It's very subtle. Uh, they're just trying to get more visibility coming in on the other side. Um, again, it's, it stays, as, as Tim has pointed out, it stays under the actual <laughs> square footage that will be allowed linear on that facade. It's just going for that second sign. So it's a multi-tenant location. It's a very large building. It's a very architectural building. And this would blend in, but also would help identifying from this causeway on there to where they can identify where Gongos is. Because it can kind of get lost, which is nice because you don't have the signs cluttering up the way the architecture is designed. So, Thank you. Mayor. Feels this kind of similar to what we did recently on Campbell Road with Benapro and HR Pro and something other pro. You know, multi-tenant. Yeah, I do remember that, right. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Any questions for the petitioner? Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll, move, appro I'll move approval of the variance. Support? Support. Support by Mr. Kloster. Any discussion? 
of seeing a, a mayor. It looks nice. I mean, outside of our decision criteria here, it's tastefully done and it looks nice. We've done this before. It makes sense. I mean, we want people not. I mean, I guess and to some extent we want people to get lost in our downtown and see all the amazing <laughs> shops and everything. But, you know, uh, Gongo's is a great tenant we've attracted, and uh, they do excellent work, and it'll be good to see a sign up there. So. Yeah, that can building's really nice. No. So. Good comments. Anything else? And, again, Ms. Uh, different than the last one, which, again, with the electronic and such, I mean, we tend to want to approve the wayfinding signage, and this is within the square foot area and everything, even though it's two separate wards, but it's just a repetition, mm -hmm. so... It makes sense, yeah. I agree. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, on item number three, this is a sign variance a request to replace non conforming wall sign for professional office building um, at 949 North Main Street. Uh, the petitioner in this case uh, recently replaced an existing wall sign on the north side of their building uh, along the Cantalpa Drive uh, area as, as depicted on uh, uh, photos in your uh, report. Uh, the sign is uh, 20 feet by 6 inches, six, 20 feet 6 inches by 10 feet 4 inches or with a sign area of 211.83 square feet. Sign area two does allow wall signs, but limit it to a maximum no more than 100 square feet. Uh, so the first request is related uh, to waiving 111.83 uh, square feet. The second part of the uh, appeal is under the sign ordinance, wall signs have to have a, a placement of no less than uh, eight feet above the public sidewalk. The bottom of the proposed sign, or the, the sign that's been installed, is two, two feet five inches uh, from the sidewalk. Uh, so those are the two variances the uh, uh, petitioner is requesting from the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Twain. Any questions? Is the petitioner here? I am not the petitioner. My name is Jack Kemp. I own signs by tomorrow here in Royal Oak. Okay. Um, the petitioner is here, uh, gentleman, Mrs. Leonard, who owns the building there. Thanks, um, with that. Hello. Leonard Elant. And I found out about this about 2 o'clock this afternoon. I thought this issue was done a year ago and everything, so I wanted to come down and support him, but I think this needs a little bit of history told with it. Um, it was about a year ago, this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a heavy storm and winds, and I got a call from Leonard saying his sign had come off. And, of course, I knew it. I've been driving through Royal Oak for 30 years. And I figured it was just a little loose on the corners. And I said, let me drive out and put it up. But we had never met before. I didn't know. But the winds were bad. The storms were bad. So as I got out there thinking, you know, a couple screws, get it back on the wall, here was a sign hanging off uh, right, I mean, ready to go into Catalpa. And... Um, I'm, I'm a decent sized sign shop. I do not have the equipment to handle that. I have a subcontractor that I work with, and they are called Fort Tech Signs. And I got a hold of them and said, hey, we need to get a crane out here or something. In the meantime, uh, with all this, the police came up. We had put yellow tape around in that, and they were adamant about do something, get something, get something done. And it really wasn't a danger, but I mean, I understand. The company that came out, the subcontractor, Fort Tech, called down to the city and said, here's our situation. What can we do? We know, you know, we, we to pull it down. But basically what it came down was if we rebuild it, it's okay to put it back up. All is going on with the storm, the cop cars and everything. But we did get word from the city, and I don't know who we spoke to. Again, I, this is, I had left by then. Um, but he said, basically, if you rebuild it, you can put it back up. It'll be okay. Um, bottom line, he called back again and said, for us to rebuild this, we're going to have to have four to five days plus time to schedule it in, of sitting there to come up with the things. Or we could bring it down with a crane, put it up, and haul it back down to our place in Detroit. And that was what happened. So this sign actually was pulled down, all right, and we were told there wouldn't be a problem with this if we rebuild it, which we did, and prettied it up, I mean, you're going to do that, and put it back up on the wall. 
the framing and everything's there. Yeah, some of the stuff's gone. There were some brackets of that were rusted. Um, some of the weatherproofing on the side. I mean, we, we, we couldn't have it whole, but I mean, it was, it is the sign, it was fixed. So then I found out, I think uh, in March, there was a citation and I said, no, go down, Leonard called me. I said, go down to the city and talk to them about it and say, you know, this was just a sign that could be fixed and redone. There wasn't a need for a permit. There wasn't a need for a variance, even with the grandfather clause. And was that in, in effect a year ago, the new ruling? Yeah, there is no such thing under the sign ordinance as a but grandfather clause. when did that come into effect? 2001. Oh, really? Yep. Jesus, okay. Um, either which way, we put it back up. And then all this started tumbling down from here until, and then I figured, I didn't hear anything for a while. I figured it was all resolved, all good. And then a sudden, uh, today, I get a call and it's like, you're coming down. I pulled up the minutes of the meeting. I went, oh my God, you're kidding me. So that's why I came down to explain the situation of what this whole sign is about and what was done. Um, yeah, it, you know, and I have pictures to show you too. There was another advertiser up there. Um, when this thing did blow down and it was an act of God, a new advertiser came in. It is an income form. Let's, let's talk real here. Um, we put that sign up. My subcontractor did all the building. He put it up and then I applied the vinyl to it. So that's kind of why I'm here to really explain the whole story that Leonard and his son really weren't privy to through all that. And I'm planning on retiring and the revenue generated by this sign is part of my consideration for my retirement. And this has really just come about and I found this out today. I knew there was revenue there, but I didn't know Leonard at, you know, 48 yeah. years old was going to retire this soon, but Who? Uh, yeah. Um, but it is a source of income and it is almost identical to what was there a year ago before the storm hammered it yeah. is and excluding the graphics. They are different. That's all that's changed. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just a point of clarification, a couple things. So number one, okay, so this, again, it's not a sign, it's an advertisement. It's a billboard on the side of the building, right. correct? Right. Um, which, again, I don't think our sign ordinance allows that in a neighborhood business zone, is it? Is mm -hmm. a, a billboard allowed? It's considered a wall sign. It's considered we regardless. At, we don't look at what's on it, per se. What's on it anymore. It's been there for years. I, I realize that because I live around the corner from there, actually, and so I, I know about the other sign as well. But I was going to say, again, consistent with I just made the comment on the last one, I mean, we're trying very hard to get consistent with our wayfinding signage and, and such and, and to have all the signs in compliance when they are updated. So basically, it's the size that's out of compliance, as you note in the notes here. Um, and there isn't a grandfather clause, per se, for something like that. That's not, that doesn't exist. I just wanted to clarify. And the, and the only t only business in the building is the Alant Tax Service. Yes, they have yes, the whole building otherwise. But this sign has nothing to do with what's going on in the building. No. Mayor? Can, Tim, can you clarify the impetus for the change? Is it the fact that there was an act of God that knocked down the sign and had to be repaired? Or is it the fact that the content of the sign changed? So the in this case, the advertisement. Well, I, I don't want to speak for the building department's determination as to what, what they called it uh, based on, but it, it's, it's very similar to any of the signs that you've seen on Woodward where they reface them, mm -hmm. where they're putting something new in them uh, and they need a uh, permit for it or the building department recognizes it changed without uh, the appropriate approvals. Uh, so it has changed. The petitioner acknowledged it changed. And so they're simply saying that it's because there is no non-conforming status for a wall sign or other signs under the sign ordinance. You either need to grant the variance or they need to bring it into compliance. So because the, the purpose so of not the purpose of non-conformity is when it goes away, it goes away. Right, it's about so, double the size right now of what so it's yeah, two hundred and eleven square feet versus a hundred, which it's is a lot. little more than double. So the, if I can clarify this too, because of my understanding, the citation was issued and of course we're here on a variance right. because of the graphics, not the sign itself. 
No, it's the size. No, you're, you're here because the sign was changed without the appropriate approval. Okay, but we were given approval verbally, Helter I Skelter, I, I don't care how it was came about, but it, we were advised, go ahead and do it. That was two phone calls. It's still a different sign. I, I, I don't know who that, who that was or what that was. I don't either. Again, it was a subcontractor. We got police wearing, we got this. We went down. There was an extremely large amount of money to rebuild and redo that. There's welding. I, and we went with the, the basic assumption, get it done, go ahead and rebuild it and put it back up. I, I have no idea who told you that, and neither do you, apparently. I don't. And I tried to get a hold of Michael, and uh, I don't know where he was today. I know he's not on vacation or anything, but I could not drag him down to see who it was. I mean, it could be anybody. It could have been Kevin, whoever in that department. I don't know who he contacted. But we worked on that assumption, or we would have left it there. Well, you wouldn't have left it falling down. Well, we... <laughs> Well, but regardless, it's still a, no, it's a different no, sign. We, we are there. honorable business people, but yeah. I got to tell you, if we're not going to be able to put it back up, we would have negotiated with Leonard or the city to remove it and get out of harm's way. Okay, sir. We're here this evening to make a, a decision with this All body. Right. On, on this. I think the arguing back and forth is not productive. Okay. The, but I want to get my point. We were advised. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, is there any, are there any more questions for the petitioner? Is there a motion? A motion to deny variances A and B. There's been a motion by Mr. Kluster to deny um, A and B. Is there support? I support. Support by Ms. Beakey. Is there any discussion? I, uh, okay. Um, Ms. Beakey and Ms. Douglas? And let's yeah, say. The, the, oh. I mean, the circumstances under which we can grant these variances specifically say that um, the har alleged hardships and practical difficulties are both, which will result from a failure to grant the variance, include substantially more than mere inconvenience or monetary concern. Um, and I, you know, my heart reaches out to you that you relying on this income, um, but um, our hands are tied um, in these circumstances. And I, I mean, this, this billboard has been part of the character of the community for the, there for the, you know, 25 plus years that I've lived here. And I'm around the corner from Miss Beaky and I see it all the time. Um, and I feel bad, um, but I do have to support the motion. Ms. Beaky? No, I was just going to say that if, if it were possible to put one in compliance, again, when there are changes, it's important to look at what the ordinances are. And, and again, it's unfortunate, but it is very far out of compliance. And so that's why I support. Of the discussion. One of the things that I understand, and, and I'm all for it, um, I heard Eric speak about um, the one on Woodward, keeping both in compliance. I, I kind of support that. In this case, looking at that, if we bring it down to 100 square foot, correct, Max, on that wall sign, and lift it up eight, there is going to be a very unattractive view there. And I don't know how we economically fix that. You've got a situation. I just have a couple of these, but this is what this wall looked like after that sign went down. So we're going to put 100 square foot, basically cut it in half. OK, sir, we have a motion on the table. Is there any other discussion on this motion? Okay, not seeing all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion to deny is approved, four to one. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, we have uh, item four. This is a notice of intent to update the master plan from the city of Berkeley. <clears throat> Just informational. Uh, they're required to provide that notice, and we pass it along. Okay. Before we adjourn, um, Mr. Godek is not here. I want to thank him for his service uh, to the Planning Commission. He's stepping down, or he's leaving the commission, and uh, I think he's been he's served uh, nine or ten years. About I think. Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen years. Maybe. 
12 at least. Yeah. Over 10 years. <laughs> Over a decade. So uh, uh, we wish Dan the best. He's uh, uh, a great service to the community. He also serves on the uh, traffic committee. We appreciate all of the time he's given. And uh, we will have a new planning commissioner uh, next month to replace him. I just say I, I had a chance to talk to Dan. Unfortunately, um, he had a work obligation that he had to attend to tonight, an a oh. urgent issue that, you know, happens from time to time. All of us, uh, you know, volunteer our time in the community and have professional obligations. And, um, you know, certainly uh, his um, mark on this community is going to be long standing in a very, very positive way. Um, I asked him if he'd come out the next planning meeting so he could take his shots at me, uh, in all fairness. Um, <laughs> and I, and I jo joking around because we all have the highest respect for Dan. And I think I learned a lot from him, uh, sitting on this, uh, planning commission for, you know, the tenure that I've been on here, uh, which is very limited compared to his, uh, experience. And, um, Dan has done a tremendous amount on the traffic committee planning commission and um, Dan is a, is, a, is a key figure in this community that I think he'll take his experience and wisdom and we'll find other opportunities or he'll find other opportunities as well uh, to keep our city moving forward in a very positive direction. So we're very fortunate to have his service for so many years. Uh, term limits come up and, uh, you know, um, Dan is um, now free to, you know, help out the city in many other capacities. So uh, he'll be missed. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hedges pointed out that last month I don't need to ask for a motion to adjourn, so we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Agreed.